Welcome to the third lecture of Acharya Mahaprabhya's Birth Centenary. Jain Education and Research Foundation, in collaboration with Jain Center of South Florida and Florida International University, is conducting the lecture series, Raya Zain. Mahaprabhya Ji was born on 14 June 1920, and this year it is 2020, so it is the 100th birth centenary we're celebrating. On February 5th, 1995, Mahaprabhu Ji was formally consecrated as the 10th Acharya, the Supreme Head of the Terapan Religious Order. He was a humanitarian leader, a spiritual guru, an ambassador of peace, an ascetic practitioner with intuitive insight. He spent his life striving for universal amity. While an encyclopedia of knowledge, a scholar of Jain religious text, he has contributed greatly to the understanding and dissemination of Jain philosophy and way of life. The two practices that are well known universally is Preksha Dhyan, that is perceptive meditation that he formulated the system in 1970 in a very well organized and scientific way. The second one is Jivan Vigyan, that is the science of living. Acharya Mahaprabhuji conceived the idea of science of living on 28th December 1979 and many camps were organized in order to implement a value-based and moral education for a balanced emotional, intellectual, and physical development. Some of the feedback can be summarized as reduced in stress, improved efficiency, better concentration, and memory, better anger management. Henceforth, the lecture series are conducted based on Jainism and science. The first lecture was from our honorable speaker, Sri Narendra Bhandari, uh, hopefully he's in the guest today, on Jainism in Modern Perspective in the Way Ahead. And the second lecture was by Sri Narayan Valkachara on Doctrine of Karma and Science. And now I'm going to head over to the co-chair of our JERF, Dr. Nirmal Baird, to welcome the address. Thank you, Deep. Uh, good morning, good evening, Judge and Ender. On behalf of uh, Jain Education and Research Foundation, I'd like to welcome you all to our third lecture. You know, this year um, we're celebrating the birth centennial of uh, this great saint, uh, Acharya Mahaprabhu. But this celebration also has a special meaning for our foundation because this year, uh, you know, as we are celebrating the birth centennial, we are also celebrating the 10th anniversary of establishing our first fully endowed Jain Studies program in North America at FIU. Um, you know, bringing this program to life uh, has been a direct result of Acharya Shri's immense inspiration and foresight, uh, as well as tireless work by Samniji and our community over many, many years. Acharya Shri was uh, personally interested in having Jain studies take a prominent place in academic institutions. You know, he always said to us that you know, universities teach all kinds of skills and knowledge, but they don't teach wisdom. So how can we create an environment in our universities you know, where students come to learn universal wisdom that's in our scriptures, wisdom that's applicable to all human beings, whether you are a Jain or not? So that seed that we sowed in Florida 10 years ago is not only flourishing at FIU, but it's kind of turned into a, a, a like a full-fledged banyan tree with Jain studies now spreading to more than 15 universities across America. And through these programs, tens of thousands of students have been um, exposed to and are learning Jain teachings such as Ahimsa and Ayakant, um, and Jain practices such as meditation and, and being vegetarian. So, in you know, uh, I just wanted to quote uh, uh, something from our sutra. In Uttara Dhyan Sutra Bhagavan Mahavir said, Apana Satchame Seja, what means. What that means is, you know, search for truth yourself. And it's been a great honor to be part of an institution that is opening the doors for Jain studies and, and creating an avenue for one to search the truth. So in that journey, today I have a distinct privilege to introduce our, our distinguished speaker, Padma Shri, Dr. Sudhir Shah. Yeah, so Dr. Sudhir Shah uh, has such an impressive list of accomplishments and honors that this hour may not be enough to speak of those. So I reached out to our, uh, my dear friend, Dr. Uh, Bhandari, and asked him, what are some of the, the big highlights of his career that, uh, that we should be talking about? Um, um, so Dr. Bhandari gave me uh, a, a number of ideas. 
Dr. Sudirsha is a is a multidimensional personality. He's not only a world renowned neurophysician, but have also been leading many initiatives in the social and spiritual work. Um, Dr. Shah's scientific work uh, in Jain Darshan has focused on fasting and meditation. So in fasting, um, Dr. Shah carried out medical tests and surveillance on Pr Prahlad Jani. Some of you may know his uh, case where he had not taken food and water for many, many decades. Uh, and late president, Dr. Abdul Kalam invited uh, Dr. Shah to develop a long-term fasting protocol based on his research because he was interested in utilizing a fasting protocol for the defense personnel on front lines so that they could survive without food in dire circumstances. On meditation, Dr. Shah uh, pioneered use of advanced instrumentation and measurement techniques to study effects of um, meditation on brain. He, he mapped out uh, blood flow, changes in different parts of the brain for long time Buddhist meditators so that you know, we better understand how meditation uh, has effect on, on brain structure and, and flows. Um, some 15 years ago, Dr. Shah and along with uh, Jitendra Shah and, and my dear friend, Dr. Narendra Bhattari started Science and Jainism Forum at LD Institute of Indology. And that forum has now evolved into Science and Spiritual Research Institute. And I believe that's perhaps the only institute focused solely on study of science along with Jain Darshan. I can go on and on, but I think we all would rather hear from Dr. Shah. So without further ado, let's hear from Dr. Shah on science and Jain lifestyle. Over to Dr. Shah. Thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate your kindness for giving such a elaborate introduction. I am very thankful to Samniji and organizers and the chair bearers for giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you. Am I audible to all of you, please? Yes. Ajit. And um, I also welcome all the delegates who are here. Uh, I will share the screen first. Yeah. Yeah, so Sarangi has uh, given me this topic, science and Jain lifestyle. And as you know, Jain lifestyle means a lot of things and some of them we will try to incorporate in my talk. First of all, I am very much thankful that Hello. Uh, Acharya Mahaprabhya ji had personally given me blessing at a lot of occasions and this is the picture of my book inauguration which was done at his reverend hand at Koba in near Gandhinagar. So I am particularly personally blessed with uh, you know Gurudev. I met him at several occasions. I had a chance to present before him the presentation of meditation also and he gave me a lot of suggestions which helped me a lot in my further research. So on this day of his centenary I bow down to him and take his blessings. My plan for this talk is just I would introduce the Jain Darshan and make context setting for 21st century and we'll talk about the main tenets little and then dwell on to ahar vigyan meditation penance and other things and what i feel what is the importance of all these things we'll start with the prayer prayer to lord mahavir shrimade viranathaya sanathaya dutarshya Mahananda Saro Raja Marala Yarhate Nama Krutapadade Pijane Krupa Mandaratario Vishad Bashpada Badrum Shri Vira Jinanetrayo 
will go down to omniscient Lord Mahavir. Lord Mahavir, omniscient Tilsankar, after achieving Kyurg just out of compassion, he charted out a spiritual path for the uplift of the soul and the liberation of the soul. This path also leads to physical well-being, mental peace, emotional control and total health of an individual undoubtedly. So it is such a wonderful path that has been created. Though it takes you to liberation, it on the way it automatically heals the person makes him positive for the health, physical health, mental health and emotional health. Most important is, it is if, if this religion, the path that he has charted is practiced universally, it can bring universal peace, ecological balance and welfare of the universe of all living beings. So it can be a global religion. It can solve issues of non-violence, intolerance, terrorism, pollution, capitalism, and a lot of burning things that we are seeing. The world is at unrest and everything can be sorted out if everyone follows the principles of Jain religion. What he preached has turned out to be permanent and absolute truth. That is a called type of super science. Science is still evolving, but many of the things which he said then is becoming more and more relevant today. And that's how we can say that he was the greatest scientist Earth has ever seen. And that is just, that can be explained on the basis of Keval Gyan. Only Keval Gyan can explain that. In today's post-COVID era, you can see that everything is on fire. And I can bet and also all experts will agree that the principles of non-violence, Anekant, Aparigra, etc. and the Jain way of lifestyle can certainly resolve all these issues and can bring us back to the positive health also. His preachings and his vision were beyond any rag, dvesh or attachment or more. So, I don't think we have any reason to disbelieve what he said because he was up the push. Now, what is Jain philosophy? If you really study Jain philosophy, you will agree that it's a complete knowledge. There is it's my gyan hai, vigyan bhi hai, or sarva, everything is there. It's a way of life and way of ethics. It's a perfect way of liberation as we discussed. There is a perfect balance of ecological things. There is a classic karmic theory, there is Anekantvad, Syadvad, and all these principles are compatible with these principles of modern science. May it be physics, biology, psychology, physiology, medicine, life science, diet, mathematics, astronomy, chemistry, and what not. You see, most important thing uh, which we discuss in our forums is what is dharma? The definition according to Jain religion is the Vattu Sahau Dhammo. Whatever is the real nature of the object, that is Dharma. And that is why our all principles of Jain religion are in, in complete uh, connection to the nature. And therefore, Jain religion, science and nature are all in tune and therefore they speak the same language and the laws are also same. Similarly, dharayati iti dharma, whatever holds us is dharma and that is how the Jain religion has a capacity to hold the whole world. Even the foreign dignitaries and Indian dignitaries have written wonderful words of praise about Jain philosophy. Now where do I stand? I am a poor guy, I am trying to, you know, go to the keep of Everest with my little small things or maybe I am trying to jump across a lake without my enough of the spirit or enough of the courage also. But I have taken this help from experts and I need your help and input also because we want to propagate what we have learned from our religion and I want to give whatever I have understood uh, from all these people and try by reading the text and that I am going to share with you. Now, everybody wants evidence, relevance and context. This is the era of science and you know, every the issue 
is you know the scientific temperament and the scientific language so the issue is how scientific our school is and not up to total scientific proof because science is still evolving and certain things will not have proof so far and it will over time evolve second thing science believes in you know measurements measurements by our senses like eyes and ears and they have their own limitations you know that very well so the question is not of a total scientific proof but how the scientific school is so this talk is completely dedicated to reinstate our faith in our religion and i want to say that it will open up vision it will make incentive for reading for people that will regulate your thought process you will know that there is a lot of need for research for human welfare for animal welfare and basically for the uplift of soul and the global peace jain spread thought can be spreaded and it can do lot of good to the universe as we discussed and this will ultimately bring respect for the whole indian culture and as we go through presentation you will realize acharya mahaprabhu ji used to say it is easier to consider jainism as a scientific religion based on its scientific content but i feel that jainism qualifies itself to be placed in the category of a science due to its spirit of scientific inquiry so it's another way of you know is a scientific uh, text itself it explores the truth through scientific more and does not stop till that truth is fully realized and that is the beauty of jain darshan so let us begin the panoramic tour you know this is lord mahavir and there are different great scientists you know madam curie and einstein and others and among them uh, lord mahavir stands out as a super scientist now ideally my this talk would have been in five section one is basic sciences like physics chemistry what exactly jain religion says and uh, how the things might uh, you know uh, tell you with that but that section i am not going to take today i am going to focus mainly on ahar vigyan that is food philosophy and science behind jain tenets and practices this together will constitute our jain lifestyle to main uh, mainly and then there are other things which could be said on medical science in allied sciences which will not touch today before that i would like to start the set the context now science and indarshan there as i said the laws of nature the laws of science and laws of jain dharma but to sahav dhamo these are almost same and that is because truth is the same so what's what is the law of causality in science is our karma vad complementarity is anekandva determinism is karma bad paryay entanglement is paraspara progra jivana principles of uncertainty sadva laws of conservation that is eternal nature of dravya similarly quantum mechanism uh, coexistence law all this can be you know very well explained on basis of jain darshan before i come to the main part of my talk i will like to put this few lines for those who are novice for jain darshan there are certain verses from the tattvartha adigam sutra which are taken like anushani gati that the motion occurs in the straight line except you, you give external pressure or external force veda dhanu that the atom is the final product of a matter and that cannot be further divided that, that cannot be fusion in anu because it's the final product tat bhav avyam nityam total quantity of matter remains as it is that is universal matter upayogo rakshanam the sentience is the defining characteristics of a living being sangrina samanaska the higher the devil the mind the higher the animal will be in the evolution you will be surprised that is it these are the sentences from a textbook of science or a religion how old it is well these are so you must be known these are from the tattvartha adigam sutra written about in the first century by Maswati ji, and the first uh, ever verse of this uh, uh, text is Samyak Darshan Jnana Charitra Ni Moksha Marga. 
because this is a book of spirituality it talks about moksha how you can liberate your soul and attain moksha and that is samyak darshan and chaitanya moksha mandir but to attain moksha you have to know what is jeev what is ajeev how does this uh, moksha occurs because the jeev is going to some place called moksha so what are the laws of motion from where it passes so you have to know cosmology you have to know other dravyas what you have to know time space time matter everything so that is the reason why in this book of spirituality about 2000 years back the everything uh, is uh, depicted in in form of physics chemistry biology etc 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 so that is the depth of jain religion Jainism is a complete philosophy and lifestyle for the Siddhartha. The basic thing is Ratna Trayi Moksha Marga, Samyak Darshan, Samyak Nan, Samyak Charitra. These are the three important jewels. These are called yoga for achieving moksha. And our main mantra is Namaskar Maha Mantra. The important uh, things we have is our basic daily practice is Ahimsa. aparigra and aneka simple harmless pious and satisfactory life jains f- should follow five anurata as shravak and 12 vows of shravak while those who have renunciated vows they do five mahavrata then there is the picture of 12 types of tapa 12 bhavana and so on kashay nigra is one of the most important quality rag desh nirvan forgiveness is our uttam kshama is our basic requirement we have to follow six avashyak that is guru vandan pratikraman samay prayashtit karasra meditation we have the jewel of anekantvad syadvad karmavad etc and our dharma talks about sarva virti dharma total stoppage of karma through ahimsa sanyam tap and the four pillars of dharma are dan shil tap and bhav so in nutshell this is what jain darshan is there are a lot of other things which we have no time to describe but based on these simple things you know we can uh, construct the, you know the jain philosophy in biology we have upayogo lakshanam as i mentioned sentience is the defining characteristic of the soul as a neurologist or a doctor if somebody asks me what is the definition of life there is a very complex definition it does not convey anything while in jain religion a single two words statement two words verse it is written that sentience is the defining characteristic of life the constant awareness consciousness and application of knowledge is a pure the one that survives applies knowledge and does not disintegrate is karta and is equal to the proportion of body is called jiva so there is one important statement in jain the darshan and you know it is there in our all logos parasparo ugraho jivana the function of the soul is to render services usefulness to one another that is the simple meaning each soul is entangled with all the rest in the universe and we are influenced by the rest this is the basic tenet of jain darshan the whole jain darshan stands firmly on non violence and if you hurt one animal here the whole universe is disturbed and ultimately you yourself will be disturbed so non violence is the most important thing and if you go from the basis of physics and science you know what max said max principle says that the inertial mass of a particle is a result of the interaction of mass of other bodies in the rest of the universe so you can extend it to the life and can say the life of even the smallest being is as a result of the interaction of life in the rest of the universe no one can survive by himself that is if i destroy life from the earth or 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 create or hurt a life somewhere on the earth i'll automatically be hurted or i'll be ceasing to exist so that is this immediately leads to the principle of non violence why i'm saying this 
because the whole ahar vigyan and the tap etc it will be fundamentally related to non violence entanglement is a epr paradox as you must be aware was students of science they would know whatever happened to one particle would thus immediately affect the other particle whatever in the universe it may be einstein called it the spooky action at a distance so with that example i am now starting uh, ahar vigyan one of the important aspects of lifestyle you know what the jain darshan goes into the depth of philosophy of food we are not talking about quantitative aspects only but we talk about qualitative aspects sattva rajas and tamas sattvic food rajasic food is your vigai and tamasic food is mahavigai that we we'll come to see modern science is confined of determining the caloric values of and classification into vitamins proteins and carbohydrate content but the jain school of thought has gone into the subtler properties of various food items and deal with its psychic as well as physical properties like sattva rajas and tamas so one is types of food then food habits how to eat when to eat etc etc then we recommend always drink water after boiling and then cooling it down or filtering water and then we also discuss about the life of different food items because certain flours they last for 3 days certain flours are not edible after 7 days etc etc that details have been discussed in our jain video and uh, if time permits i am going to talk about my research subject that is types of ahar prakshep ahar vajahar loma let's see long before the microscopic uh, microscope was invented and the existence of microscopic life was shown and plants were considered to be living by modern science these facts were established in jain philosophy and they form the foundation of complex practice as a corollary of non violence as i said it's a basic tenet of jainism now in those days about 2600 years back when there was no microscope how one could have seen the microscopic life the, the small little uh, life in the water air and earth etc that is why i mentioned that except for sarvagya uh, except for the keval gyan this is not possible and all those things what lord mahavir and the disciples saw i mean exactly the instruments and gadgets have come of now but they could predict everything because they could see everything that is why there is severe restriction of ratri bhojan and drinking water without boiling and also to avoid kandmul like potato and similar anand kai plants that is because of the uh, uh, principle of uh, non violence ratri bhojan is a terrible scene according to religion the physiology at night is like you know the metabolism becomes slow after sunset there is a decrease activity after sunset and uh, uh, we don't move out much and then there is in digestion so everybody should finish the food by sunset jain darshan says additionally there is absence of sunlight so there will be excess of organisms so we will be eating up them up or they may be called of kind, kind of violence sunlight can kill them and control the pollution also and you should eat actually 48 minutes before sunset because the sheath yoni microscopic jiva they are formed at the time of sunset so before that you have to eat the best digestion is at the middle of the day and sorry and ayurved also preaches this for the positive health purposes allopathy preaches to eat early because of the metabolic purposes now as you must be aware the nobel prize of 2017 was awarded to jeffrey hall for their fundamental research on circadian rhythm and they mention that life on earth is adapted to the rotation of our planet and it's known that living organisms including humans have an internal clock biological clock that helps to anticipate and adapt to the regularism of the day 
that clock is because of a circadian rhythm that clock regulates critical metabolic functions such as our sleep patterns feeding behavior hormone release blood pressure body temperature eating and digestion etc our well being is affected when there is a chronic misalignment between our external activities and this internal biological clock what happens actually they discovered there is a molecular mechanism behind this there is a protein that that is released they showed that a gene encodes a protein that accumulates in the cell during night and it is is then degraded during day giving a self sustaining clock work in the function so if you eat at the night you know, this whole circadian rhythm is disturbed and you get disturbed metabolism and you fall prey to diabetes blood pressure obesity and lot of other diseases this is one example actually we jains should have found it out but the nobel prize has gone to somebody else that is the iron now regarding plant kingdom as you are aware that uh, jagdish chandra bose in around 1926 found out that the plant kingdom has a kind of uh, pain and other uh, sensory phenomena and he gave the example of lajamani's uh, plant but long before he discovered our jain religion or jain darshan has classified plants into you know that uh, different categories not only that we have mentioned about nesha kashai instincts and feelings and perceptions in plant kingdom those colorful plants uh, who attract the uh, kitaks and the small uh, ants etc they have nil nesha those plants who have bad smells and thorns they have kapot nesha would you agree that the uh, human life has kashai but even the plant kingdom has kashai carrots potatoes they are having a kind of low burst kashai they accumulate and therefore they grow and if you eat this kind of plants your uh, thoughts also would change and you also may become you know greedy or person with parigra so that is what uh, our jain religion says kandmul is also ananka and therefore we should avoid at all cost Jain Darshan has mentioned about the instincts like ahar, fear, accumulation, reproduction in plant kingdom. So these are the areas which are not still studied in science, and I think one of our young guys takes up this kind of research. Probably uh, one of the Nobel Prize can go to our Jain scholar. This is one of the reasons why I am presenting all this thing. Ishi Vigyan, have you taken it seriously? uplift of individual soul and welfare of all living beings are the central themes of jain religion so we have to avoid lilo trees that is the sachit uh, all vegetables etc on 12 tithis except additionally on both holy days that you know that holy comes in month of chaitra uh, and aso and in parishan also you should not eat according to lord mahavir the fate of next birth is created as per the deeds done during these days of tithi so do more religious activity and avoid such this is reference has come from mahanishid and anand sundar granth so this is the reason uh, why lord has asked us not to eat little trees scientifically it helps in balancing ph and water element during these days as per the lunar cycle so our ph every 3 4 days we have to make it balance and that is how by avoiding little three you can do that similarly there is a lot of science in vigai and mahavigai you know vigai is vikrut perversion all rajasik food like milk curd ghee oil sugar fried items and sweets objects these are all vigai if you eat them you have rajasik thoughts and you know you tend to be little pramadi and all that so that is perversion that is rajasik food mahavigai is the worst perversion is tamasic food there are four mahavigais butter honey all non vegetarian items and alcohol this must be avoided all cost while this vigai you should stick as far as possible 
and that is the beauty of Jain religion. The four objects which change the natural tendencies of body, mind, and soul can and pervert them. They are called bigots. So this much depth of thoughts in Jain religion regarding food sciences. So if I summarize, Pradidin, we have to eat daily uh, fresh food, sattvic food, non vegetarian should be avoided, no kind of meat, eggs or fish should be taken. We should also not take uh, honey, butter, etc. No alcohol, filter, boiled water you should take and take your food before sunset and next day after sunrise, after an hour. So, you should try and do uh, fasting at least once a month or at least uh, if possible once a week. We should uh, avoid all those vigor we have discussed. We should take less food than what is required. Maybe you eat three or four uh, hours less. You take little less than what you feel to eat. You know, that is called Unodari breath. And while you are eating, you don't uh, use mobile, television, etc. So that is something about the Aharvigyan. We'll talk a little about the science behind Jain tenets and practices. As I mentioned earlier, there are about uh, 12 types of Pinans, uh, Tapa. Six are external and six are internal. What is external? That is related to your body. Anushan, Unodari, Vritti, Sangshev, Rasatyaga, Kaya, Kvesha, Sanlinta. Abhyantara are related to your mind and soul. Pratya, Prayashtit, Vinay, Vyavacha, Swadhyay, Kaya, Sarg and Meditation. We'll see one by one. There are two types of, we have discussed, external and internal, right? Now, Anshan is your fasting. You may do intermittent fasting or 36 hours fasting or 7 days, 16 days, 30 days, depending upon your caliber. Unodari is eating less food than what you feel like. So eating uh, 4 bolus less than your requirement or your wish. Viksha Jiramatlab is for the those who have renunciated world. Rasa Paridya reduce the different uh, items in the food, particularly sweet, etc. You take a decision that I will not eat uh, more than one sweet thing, etc. etc. Kaya Klesh and Sanlita. These are the different types of uh, external woes. Uh, as I mentioned, not to eat milk, curd ghee, oil, etc. This is called Rasa Parityag. And then you have to uh, remain alone, aloof, and not to meet many people. That is called Sanlinta. So there are certain austerities which we should know. To use very limited items and with caution is a practice of non-violence. Collectiveness and over-utilization is also violence. This is a very profound statement. A parigrav when we follow non-collectiveness, we are automatically following non-violence. When we take much more things than required from the system, you are actually doing harm or injustice to somebody else. That thing belongs to others. When you take away that thing, that is a kind of violence. That is what, how much microscopic details our religion is seen. And this is the reason why you do austerities. One of the reasons, okay? Biyasina is a discipline eating habit, don't eat junk, have boiled water, no food and water after sunset, take only two times meals during the day. It is very simple. Ekasana, you know that you eat once a day that and give rest to the body, rest to the stomach system and avoid abhaksha, anantkai and apatya food. So and avoid all perversions, vigai, mahavigai and only eat moderate amount of sattvic food, that is ekasana. Iam meal, you know, is a totally dry kind of food. Avoid all vigai, no mahavigai, 
so control of pitta and cough automatically occurs in ayurved language if you don't have to eat spices and that gives control over your tongue your senses your kashayas are reduced your power on mind increase there is no lilotri is no sachit so pitta is also avoided so all three dosha according to ayurved expert i was sitting with them and they explained me all this thing so this is how the ayurved is and you know the oli of ayurved we do twice a year at sandhi kal months of chaitra and aso why at this particular time because the sharad ritu and that particularly the badarva aso and this hemant these are the seasons where the maximum kind of uh, disease occur they say that these are the father and mother of vaidya the all the doctors try on these two ritus and if you do little care if you exercise care and do only your all toxins are removed and you don't get uh, disease then is a fasting sitting near your atman what is upavasa upa means like near vas means your stay sitting in your own soul atman for 36 hours that is uh, there are two types tvihar and chaviar upas in chaviar you don't have to take even water in tvihar you can take water till sunset and we had done a project of prolonged fasting with defense institute of uh, physiology and allied science on those jains of uh, who were doing fasting for 8 days 16 days 30 days and we had control study with you know people who were not fasting and the findings were amazing of those pilot study we wanted to take a little more extensive research on, research on that but for some reason it is not materialized we'll be doing in the coming years but what we found that the physiology and biological parameters of those people who do fasting are much much better than the people who are randomly eating and the hormonal function autonomic functions are also much better so fasting has also a profound effect on your physiology and biology and mental systems there is atmaniyantran manonigra and there should be is a detox mechanism so balancing of all dosha and uh, uh, malakriya swastex everything is uh, under control with that now the other nobel prize if i talk here a is on the fasting that has gone to why oshumi on for autophagy i'm sure you must be aware of this uh, particular nobel prize now what is autophagy autophagy means eating oneself i'm thankful to professor bandari for giving me these slides uh, he was very kind enough to impart this now autophagy means eating oneself physical body is our direct share and it contains you know how many cells we have 50 trillion cells in our body and most of these cells are in the process of regeneration and degeneration so we are replaced every now and then our in one year our whole body so to say is replaced because the cells die now what happens to these cells these cells are excreted by our respiratory chain by carbon dioxide mechanism or through perspiration or through excretion by the liver and kidney mechanisms or through gut but still there are so many million cells which remain in the body and if you give rest to the digestive system if you don't eat anything if you don't give energy to the body the surviving cells will have to survive on something and so they eat up those dead cells and therefore there is a detox process and this autophagy eating our own body cells the dead cells are eaten by the surviving cells and that creates a cell sense of balance in the body the disease are removed and this is one of the greatest natural law and the law of science and biology that you come to a state of steadiness and you become uh, very very agile you have a lot of energy and you don't fall prey to disease disease like cancer are related to overeating and if you do fasting disease like cancer heart disease your rheumatism asthma blood pressure obesity diabetes can be reduced this is the connotation of this research 
and even the Harvard study has come out with the similar effect of fasting on aging. The aging process is reversed. Unfortunately, you know, this study mentions about Islamic fasting, Buddhism, fasting, Christianity, but nowhere our genes is mentioned. And guys, we have to work hard on this because the fasting and the you know, depth of fasting which we have is, I don't think any religion has gone to this much depth and this much science. So we have to correct this. So the subjects that require further research in this is, this is prevention by Jain diet and lifestyle and three types of ahar, that is ojahar, lomahar and pakshep ahar. And when I was doing research on prolonged fasting on so many subjects like from Iratan Manik to Prahlad Jani to three other Europeans, I found out that there are people who can survive without food for a prolonged period of time without uh, being in a state of uh, starvation. And they are agile, their mental faculties are fine, physically fine. And the reason, and they are not eating anything uh, like uh, by bolus or by IV fluid or anything. The other way of uh, providing energy to human body is through placental feeding, which is for the you know growing fetus, which is not the case for people who are born and already grown up. So the third kind of uh, it mechanism of survival is Loma Har. That I came to know from Uttara then and partly from the uh, references from Siddhas and Devakar. And that helped me profoundly in my research, which we'll discuss if time permits in the question and answer session. So, Jain, this Jain religion had given this kind of direction in, the, uh, in those times, 2600 years back that you know, one body can survive even in the, uh, they called it uh, Ahar Vargana. That is, uh, I don't know the technical translation, but the, the items of uh, food through the senses, like smell or touch, etc., they can also uh, make you survive. And this was the famous case that I studied, uh, Mataji. And this gentleman did not eat, drink anything, and even did not pass even in stool. And even whole the past was involved. Professor Abdul Kalam was involved, and we had a wonderful uh, outcome of this study. So the medical science talks about you know positive health gaining and prevention and treatment of disease and by Jain lifestyle. So uh, stress relief. The philosophical concepts of Jainism, food types, austerity, penance, and meditation are all useful for men and women. So, what are the? These are the last uh, uh, part of my talk. Another 15 minutes. The tapa, abhyanta, the internal walls. One of them is prayashtit. So, anandanand bhavo me upadit. There are 10 different types of prayashtit. Alochana, Pratikraman, Ubay, Vivek, Vissar, Tap, Ched, Mul, Parihar, Tadashatan. We don't have time to go into details of it, but for your information, these are the different types of prayashtit. The second number is Vinay, politeness. Politeness is the root of Jain Darshan. We have to be polite and do, you know, a lot of tougher woes, etc. Jain Darshan says, the one who is without politeness, how he will attain any kind of uh, moksha or any kind of uh, penance or any kind of uh, dharma or moksha kesamsa. Vinay is the door to moksha. So that much is the importance of Vinay. If you have Vinay, then politeness, then only you will have uh, knowledge. So we, one must follow Vinamrata and Tapa. Whenever the elderly comes or the teacher comes, you have to get up, you have to uh, raise hands and join hands and give them proper place to sit. And when they go, you have to go to the door and give them proper send off etc etc and there are five different types they have gone to so much details darshan vinay gnan vinay charitra vinay tap vinay upcharik vinay and this is the depth of jain religion 
They said that if you hurt or insult one person, you are doing insult to all people. Or if you praise and pray for some person, you are praising and praying for all people. That is what the impression says. We have Chitabasiya is what you have to take care of your uh, elderly people or those who are suffering and help them with a uh, lot of uh, uh, food or if they want some kind of uh, medicine etc you must help them that is what is here swadhyay love daily reading of some spiritual text is also a requirement in jain darshan all jains should read for that purpose every human being should read related to philosophy and spirituality and there are different aspects of swadhyay parivartana matlab you take the class from the you, you take the knowledge from your teacher then you read that if you have any question you are, go back and ask question then you do little study and think deeply on that anupreksha and then if you understood it properly impart that knowledge to others that is called dharma karta parivartana vachana prachna anupreksha or dharma karta so this is how Yang says, "Dhyan ki siddhi hoti." With knowledge, you can uh, attain uh, meditation. And then comes Kaya Sar. Kaya Sar is, you know, you don't do any extra movements, don't do any extra work. You just stay like a wood in a place for a long time, and Sar, man. You, you leave your mind, body, and your speech for a period of time and stay like a wood that is called Kalsa. And there are different types of Kalsa. Deha Jadya Shuddhi, Mati Jadya Shuddhi, Sukhduk Chiti, Shanu Peksha, Ekagata. I don't have time to go into all the details, but I'll spend five minutes now on the meditation part. Meditation is one of the biggest uh, important and in-depth, uh, I would say, I would say it is the requirement of Jain religion, it is the order of Jain religion, and it is uh, the way of Jain religion. Now many people ask me that uh, like in Buddhism, we don't have classified meditation and techniques like that. It's not a fact. If you try to understand, the Jain religion is a bhav dharma. So, what is bhav dharma? It is based on your emotions and your thinking and your process of uh, understanding. Now, every act, whether you think something, you speak something, or you do something, everything should be done in a meditative mode. So, Lord Mahavir has been preaching to uh, Gautama. Don't be in alert, don't be inattentive, don't remain even less conscious for a fraction of a second. Don't allow a single bad thought, single bad word or single bad deed in your uh, daily doings. If you remain that much vigilant, that is the kind of meditation is so he doesn't feel that we should have requirement of you know sitting separately and doing meditation like this every act should be meditative act. and therefore you will not see different kind of systems still still there are some classified ways one is the quantitative and another is qualitative meditation qualitative meditation is our dharma dhyan and shukla dhyan against your art dhyan and rautra dhyan if you if you think your Dharma Dhyan and Shukla Dhyan are good, they are excellent remedy for all types of health. Then there are other types of meditation. Our Samai, Kayo Sarg, Pratikramana are also super meditation if you properly understand and do it. As our Guruji has taught us, Paksha Dhyan, part of Vipashtana, Granthi Ved, Atma Dhyan, these are also different types of meditation. And Padastha in Pindasta, Rupasta, and Rupa, these are also different types of meditation as mentioned in Yoga Shastra by Kalikal Hemchandracharya. 
So it is not that there are no, no mention of meditation. There are several meditations, but because this is a Bhava Dharma, everything should be in a meditative mode. Let us look at Samayas. Samatva Bhava, Karma Nijra, way to liberation. Samatva towers living being, no rag, no dvesha. And Samatva towers objects, so no move and show. When you sit in Samayas for 48 minutes, you are in a complete state of balance of mind and there is no rag, no dvesh, no moan, no show. There is no attachment, no perversions, no hatred, nothing. You are in a still frame of mind, just sitting with your Atma. Samai, the another meaning of Samai is Atma, your soul. So when you are sitting with your soul, the whole world is at pause. There is nothing to be done. And this is one of the best meditation. Pratikraman is also another good meditation where you do everything in presence of your teacher or guru, where you are uh, stress-free, guilt-free, disease-free. This is followed by prayashchit and sadhana. You know the three important aspects of Pratikraman? There is a prayashchit that takes care of past and whatever bad things you have done is removed by prayashchit. The second part is Vishuddhi, which takes care of the present tense, and Vishalya takes care of the future tense. In the, on the three pretexts, the whole Pratikraman is built up, and there are six hours yet to be done in that. So, Dharmadhyan is Atma Shuddhi through Vritti and Pravritti, that is Dharmadhyan. And Shukla Dhyan, as I mentioned, was a contemplation about the soul and the experience. These are two excellent remedies for all types of health and spiritual. While what we are doing is always Artha Dhyan and Raudra Dhyan. Artha Dhyan is what Ishta Vyog and Anishta Prapti. Whatever we wish, we don't get. And whatever we don't want, we get. That is called Artha Dhyan. And then we start, start blaming things and people and everything. Instead of that, if, you, if we switch our gear to Dharma Dhyan or Shukla Dhyan, we will be in elevated state. Similarly, Raudra Dhyan is worse thoughts through violence, theft, promiscuity. These are the Raudra Dhyan, worse thoughts of violence, theft. It's, that should be again changed to Dharma Dhyan, Shukla Dhyan. Every moment you have to watch your thought and that is what is the preaching of Lord Mahavi. Samayik and Kaya are super meditation. Kaya takes care of Asan Pratyahar also. And <clears throat> that is why Samayam Goyam Mahapamaye, that Dhruv Vakya. Every other minute, Lord Mahavi used to preach the term Samayam Api Mahapamaya. Be careful, be attentive, be meditative. Every fraction of a second, that is the preaching of the in meditation. As you know, as a neurologist, uh, when I was studying uh, the different thoughts in a machine called SPAC with my counterpart at uh, Pennsylvania University, Penn, Professor Andrew Newberg, we found that every thought is depicted in the brain. If you have a thought of uh, praise, love, violence, care, hatred, jealousy, everything is depicted in the brain. Don't think that the thoughts are at, uh, abstract. Lord Mai used to say the, the karma band is same if you have kind of thought or if you utter a bad word or you do bad deed. In those days without this fancy machine he could say that thoughts were atomic and this atomic representation we are now seeing over the last 15 years or 20 years that every thought is atomic that is depicted in brain. It, it, innervates the whole system, the whole pathways are excited and that affects the whole physiology. If you are angry, your whole body will be on fire, your pulse will rise, your blood pressure will rise, you, know, you will be tense, your pupil will dilate, etc, etc. A single thought can change your whole body and your thought goes to the universe and ricochets and comes back. Similarly, your, a single bad word, if you speak an ill word to anybody, don't think that it will have no impact. It will impact the whole universe as we discuss about Max Principle. Why all things are discussed there up front? Because this is a relevance to all this. So without all these machines, Sarvagya Bhagavan Mahavi could see that thought, words and uh, these have similar mechanisms and they are the reason of your karma. And that is why different types of dhyan mudras have been suggested. 
But he said all the time that out of all meditation, the best is the meditation of the soul on the soul itself. To remain constantly aware of the soul and its characteristics and its function. To dissociate soul from the body at every moment and the sentience, the application of knowledge is the ultimate knowledge. Atma ko atma se jito. Sabse badi jit apni atma ki parki jite. That is what he used to say. Samaya mapi mahapamaya gurma. After meditation, Jain Darshan commands that you should have Anupraksha. You should think of the 16 Bhavnas. You know the Asharan, Anitya, the Odi, the Love, Samsara Bhavna, Katva Bhavna, Shuji Bhavna. All these Bhavnas you should think. And for interpersonal relationship, Maitri, Pramod, Karunya, Anamadya Sabhavna, one should go. So, uh, जैसे मनुष्य शरीर में सीर और वृक्ष में उसकी जड़ उत्कृष्ट या मुख्य है वैसे ही साधु के समस्त धर्म में मूल ध्यान है दिस आर द ओरिजिनल वर्सेस फ्रॉम द आगम दैट इज व्हाट आई हैव ब्रॉट फॉर यू स्थिर अध्यवसान अर्थात मानसिक एकाग्रता ही ध्यान है अगर जो चित्त की चंचलता है उसके तीन स्वरूप है भावना अनुप्रेक्षा और चिंता एंड ही हैज मेंशन दैट ध्यान Meditation can be done in the vein of Pindastha, Padastha, or Rupati. Pindastha Dhyan ka visha hai Deha Viparish. Bhagavan jo jabhi chadmastha avastha mein hote hai, unke upar when we focus that is called Pindastha Dhyan. Bhagavan whenever he attains Kevali stage and then focus on that, concentrate on that stage of Lord Mahavir or Lord Tirsankarani, that is Padastha. And Rupat is the is on the formless soul that is Shuddha. There is also mentioned how Lord Mahavir used to do meditation. Bhagavan Upuru Adi Asana means sthir or sthir or kar dhyan karte the. Ve unche niche or tirche lok me hone wale padarthon ko de banate the. Unki drishti atma samadhi par tiki hui thi. Ve sankal ko mukt the. He was without any kind of determination or judgment. He used to sit and do. On different objects and items, and his main focus was only on his soul. And as the salt gets dissolved in water, same way, uh, the, when the uh, internal mind, the chit, becomes uh, uh, dissolved in the uh, state of uh, samadhi, that is how you get into the deep depth of meditation. That time, uh, the fire. Of uh, soul occurs, and that is how you attain the vitrak state. So, there is a different kinds of meditation, different processes that are mentioned, which I don't have time. But uh, <clears throat> last one of these uh, verse was Api Dhyati Samahavira Asanastha Pauchut Dhyanam Urdhva Mastha Skarvicha Prakshamana Samadhima Apatigna. Matlab different. Postures, body posture is to sit without moving a little here and there, and he was looking up, down, and on the side. He was focusing the mind, and without any expectation, without any judgment, he used to become totally uh, mindless. What we call aman avastha, samadhi and that is how Lord Mahavir used to do. Uh, meditation. So, what is meditation? Meditation is exercise of mind to keep it healthy and clean as we do for body. And there are different ways you can focus on breathing, focus on object, focus on a sound, focus on a thought, focus on sensual object. And as you are all aware, most of our students who are following Piksha Dhyan, we have to focus on breathing, then we have to focus on thoughts that is Vichara Piksha, then body Piksha, Shari Piksha, then Anu Piksha and then Lishya then etc. So these are the different ways and we have studied in details how different brain waves are changed, how the alpha becomes synchronized and more well formed, how their voltage increases, when theta appears, how delta occurs etc. And we saw that during meditation there are two important things, this is my last two three slides. The frontal part of the brain, uh, this part, which is responsible for humans to impart their knowledge, wisdom, judgment, intelligence, cognition, 
executive function, prioritization, everything, which is why human race is superior to all immediately inferior animals, is because of this prefrontal lobe. And as you can see, that this is the red part showing blood flow in SPAC machine. And before meditation, the blood flow was like this. And after meditative session, the blood flow increases to 30% or so in one session of meditation of 30 to 45 minutes. So guys, you can understand that with meditation, our intelligence, memory, judgment, cognition, prioritization, etc. improves profoundly. And think of those people who do daily for longer times. So why, which is why these people could, like our Gurudev, why he could see so many things and could do a lot of activities with so much precision and why he had so great intelligence and memory because of meditation. And similarly, the second important part of the meditation is that this is called the left parietal area, posterior parietal lobule on the left side that goes offline during meditation, meaning thereby the blood flow is reduced during meditation. Here the reverse effect, in the prefrontal area the blood flow increases, here it is decreased and that is for our benefit because this area is responsible for our orientation to time, place and person. I studied with this Andrew Newberg of Pennsylvania and we found out that our uh, thoughts, emotions, desires, perversions, etc. manifestation, our ego, they are manifested through our orientation to time, place, person. And this is the faculty of mind which operates through universal area. And if during meditation this part is shut down, then over time a meditator becomes profoundly peaceful, at peace with himself or herself. There will be less of the thoughts, lots desires are reduced and the kashai, ragvesh, etc. So this is what is the importance of uh, meditation. And uh, uh, we have also studied the perception of joy and on fMRI, this is a functional fMRI machine which shows reduction in the uh, capacity of you know, the area where the blood flow is focused. But when you focus on yourself, your Atman, your consciousness, there is only a dot area where the blood flow is focused, so the activity is increased. So this is how it helps in your, uh, a lot of uh, improvement uh, in your pathways, your concentration, your abilities. And there are a lot of neurochemical changes and psychological changes, your personality changes, your attitude changes you become socially more uh, uh, practical person, your tolerance increases, your compassion increases. This is a connotation to your terrorism and a lot of unrest across the world in between people and countries. So meditation, if they do their mood, behavior, memory, compassion, tolerance, everything can increase your attitude and personality can change. And lastly, uh, all compounded whatever discussed today, Jain, Ahar, lifestyle, different external internal woes, they reflect on your disease control also. When you go to a coronary heart doctor, if you have a heart attack, what he will say? You like do exercise, eat simple food, avoid oil, jaggery and sweet things, avoid bigai, do sattvic food, go for walks. So our Jain religion talks of Padhyatra, go daily to five different temples, your food habits should be changed. You do austerity, weight reduction, healthy body and mind. That is what our tapas are teaching us. Attitude change, he will say. So mental and emotional peace, samai, pratikraman, meditation. So all these things are inbuilt in our spiritual pathway, imparts us wonderful health. And we at National Jain Doctors Federation, where I was the uh, Chairman of the National Jain Doctor Federation of India, we had four major conferences. We discussed the subjects and we did a lot of research projects on this and how it helps in gastrointestinal disease, mental illnesses, neurological illnesses, cancer. The Jain lifestyle helps in all these things. Taking into account the current thing that is our our uh, Corona episode, how can we forget? 
Now, Mupati is your mask, boiled water they are asking to drink, fresh food they are asking to eat. Sangata is your social distancing, which is also mentioned in our Jain religion. You will be surprised if you have not read, go and capture this text, Ogni Yukti, written by Acharya Bhadra Bhavji in 2nd century BC, when similar kind of uh, epidemic, pandemic had occurred and he had observed how you can get rid of this by doing all these things. And this is what uh, Jain Darshan has given to the world. So these are my, uh, my last word of message, prevention of lifestyle disease, heart disease, cancer, stroke and creating positive health you can do by Jain lifestyle, with purification of body and purification of mind. If you follow six rituals and our shared Samai, Pratikaman, daily do Shamapna, do Padhyatra exercise, do Pinans, follow the Ahar Vigyan, avoid uh, night uh, eating and avoid Kandamul, Potato, etc. Avoid Vigai, avoid Mahavigai, follow the Vigyan, do positive thoughts, attitude changing, take care of your Kashai, do 12 Bhavna, do daily Kaya Sarg and meditation, do Namaskar Mantra chanting, and follow the four pillars of Dharma, Ahimsa, Sanyam, Tap, or Dahan, Shil, Tap, and Bhav, and mainly follow Ahimsa, Anekanta, Parigra. In nutshell, this is Jain Darshan. Friends, so this talk is again I'm telling dedicated for Samyak Darshan to bring your faith back to our Jinwani because I see a lot of Jain youths moving away from our religion, telling that there is no truth or no science. I am poor guy, I am not an expert on either side, but I have compiled everything for all of you. You make modification, do further research, do daily subject, do readings, and those who are in a place of research like PhD students or experts in different basic sciences or medical sciences, and those who have gazettes, do research. The religion requires to be presented in the context of science so that all humanity will follow. Let us present our religion in a scientific language, scientific temper and methodology and logic. It will solve I bet you and you must have seen it can solve many problems of world and will bring global peace and global welfare. Intolerance, pollution, consumerism, everything can be resolved. And science and world both need direction, friends, and we can do that. So please, once again, if I remind, be alert and attentive at every fraction of a second. Please don't allow your enemies to take charge of your consciousness, speech, or this. This is a supreme meditation. I had an honor to give this dossier to His Holiness Dalai Lama Ji and, of course, to uh, Professor Abdul Kalam. In one of my meetings, we had a discussion of Jain religion and the scientific aspects. So I'm lucky and I had a chance to go through a lot of literature. And I, I may suggest you to read Tattva Sutra Samai Sar Bhagavad. Bhakti Sutra, Uttarajan Sutra, etc. And other uh, Agams. And I'm thankful to Professor Bandari, Jitubai Shah, and all other experts from whom I've taken time to time guidance. And I'm very much thankful to all of you for kind listening. I think I have uh, taken a lot of your time. Thank you very much. And I, I, I really uh, want to. Uh, I uh, want to wholeheartedly thank you once again for all your uh, kindness. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for an amazing lecture. We are very humbled with sharing. Uh, you have shared your concepts and amazing concepts we have gained. Um, keeping the time in mind, uh, we are opening the forum for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you. Keeping the time in mind, we are going to open the forum for question and answers. Yeah. And uh, uh, if there is anybody who would like to ask any question, you guys can go ahead and raise your hand and we'll um, unmute the microphone for you. Um, Dr. Shah, I would like to ask you a question is, uh, can you please tell me something about your research on Yogi Prahlad Jani who had prolonged fasting? What was your hypothesis on prolonged fasting? 
So that is a great question and uh, if I really answer it properly, it will take uh, at least one hour for me to explain. But basically, Pralat Jani is a unique case and his claim was that he did not eat anything, not even a morsel of food, he did not drink anything and that he did not pass green and stool. So these claims not passing will automatically gives you an alert. So what the story showed, we asked him to get admitted in the hospital under our surveillance and we wanted to wanted to confirm what he said and at the same time we wanted to do a lot of tests which he agreed. His only request was to not give anything intravenously like any dye or we should not put any scope inside the body. We studied him for 10 days and 10 nights for first time in 2003 and at the suggestion of Professor Abdul Kalam, we repeated the study in 2010 with the past team for 15 days and nights. To our surprise, during these days, he did not eat a morsel of food, he did not pass urine, he did not drink a water and he did not pass too. And you can understand there were 24 super specialists in the team, 32 basic scientists and 400 people in the surveillance team. And there were CCTV cameras, there were people outside his room, his bathroom was sealed and all different kind of highest possible uh, kind of uh, measurements you can think of. We did all study, biological study, physiology, biology. We studied his MRI of the brain, brain angiography by MRI, coronary studies, angiography by MRI, liver, kidney, MRI, cholangiography, MRI, abdomens, just everything we did. And we did genetic. What we found that he has a close control system. He used to form urine in the bladder. It would appear in the morning and disappear in the evening. And again, it will reappear some other day in the afternoon. So there was a reabsorption phenomenon in his body. His genetic expression showed that his fat, protein, and carbohydrate metabolism are interwoven and he recycles the energy in his body. Four different mutations which are unique and nobody is able to interpret that because on earth there is no such case so we don't know how to interpret those abnormal mutated genes. There is a kind of chronic adaptation in his body, there is a kind of uh, recycling of energy in his body, there is a genetic mutation in his body and four he, that he is taking energy from the surrounding part of the uh, body. Like, he's able to take energy from the solar, from the, uh, you know, from air, from the human beings. He can withdraw knowingly or unknowingly energy from other parts. And we have some indirect evidence of this thing, which we could not uh, actually document because science is not able to measure the energy transfer mechanism as yet. But this is how it's so weird, but uh, we have documented that he did not eat or drink during 15 days. And you know what? If a person does not pass urine for four days, he needs dialysis. His kidney would fail, but nothing of that sort happened. So he's able to maintain his body. By... So this we're going to take another question. Thank you, Dr. Shah. I'm sorry to uh, yeah. interrupt you, but uh, we have Divesh Achilya. Uh, you can unmute your microphone, Mr. Achilya, and ask the question. Hello, uh, Jay Jinendra, sir. Hello. I have a question. Can you hear me, sir? Now I can hear, yeah. Tell me. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Sunil. Um, cardiologist from US 
वन सेकेंड सर इट्स एकोइंग मी there is lot of disturbance um, i have one question sir um in regards to the meditation quite a lot has been uh, enforced on um, meditating in the in between the eyebrows darshan kendra they say it affects the pituitary gland and uh, can you give us like one or two lines what happens in the gland when we meditate there and uh, is there a hormone production there how is how how it helps us thank you uh in the classical experiments of meditation they are uh, not able to measure the hormonal function or actual hormonal release during the meditation if at all you have to study that you have to do csf level and there are no studies about the pituitary hormones during meditation actually when you are focusing between two eyebrows it is ideally pineal gland and not the pituitary gland and the pineal gland is agna chakra and that is what is excited during the meditation that is uh, the standard literature mentions about that i don't think pituitary gland related correlations have been found either on mri or on neurochemical wise we, we have not found any kind of uh, uh, appropriate correlates during meditation there are only three circuits that have been studied one is the prefrontal circuit the other is left parietal and third is the limbic circuit which i have not shown but there are three areas and through limbic has effect on hypothalamus not pituitary let's see dr shah i have a question uh, my name is dr maniar i am neurologist uh, uh, it's more of a comment excellent presentation and those facts imagings were very very vivid and convincing i know you were limited with time but in future if you can provide series of lectures especially for new generation with more data uh, in a slide form so they will get convinced that jainism is a true science sure sure i'll be more than happy to do that sir. thank you thank you um, i i have a question and uh, my question is have you done any research on reading meditation you mentioned about reading spiritual books so when i'm reading spiritual books is that considered as a meditation uh that's a good question i think uh, swadhyay if you read those slides which i mentioned swadhyay that is reading is also a kind of uh, finance is also kind of meditation and that is one of the highest kind of meditation that is what our jain texts say okay but i don't think there are studies that i am aware of on uh, reading meditation thank you thank you keeping in touch uh, with you i have a minute time yes uh, what we can do is i can ask uh, shamni ji to speak first and then uh, we'll come back to you so okay. um yeah uh, dr shamni chatan um, chetanya pragya ji who is the visiting professor at fiu and uh, you would like to speak i am very much thankful to dr sudhir shah for his excellent talk on uh, science and jain lifestyle in one hour he has uh, covered many many aspects or jain practices which are the part and parcel of ascetic lifestyle and also the jain lifestyle he has one wonderfully shown all the different researches how they are affecting our physical health mental health emotional health and also how they support to elevate our cells spiritually so i am very much thankful for dr sudesh shah and we would like to listen to him again in a series as the audience has asked for giving a different lectures on neurological research on meditation and jain practices so i think that we will plan for that also uh, next lecture since uh, there is a temple activities and we i would not like to take much more time 
but i'm again thankful to sudesha for so uh, in short notice he was ready to give the talk under the series of acharya mahapragya lecture series and he is well known with acharya shri mahapragya ji he knows every thought of uh, of acharya mahapragya how he has done remarkable work in blending spirituality with science and uh, how he contributed a lot of literature just on this particular topic how jainism is so scientific so i am very much thankful again to sudesha and uh, just i want to announce that the next lecture would be on 19th uh, july and it would be uh, by dr Prof professor deepak jain and next lecture to deepak jain there would be the second next lecture would be on 2nd of august it would be again by the scientist and the professor rajmal jain so i would request to all of you all the audience to attend all the different lectures which are coming in our series and there are almost uh, nine lectures who would come in the series on different aspects of science and jainism and you would learn how jainism is scientific in its all, all practices and its all principles as sudhir sai already said that jainism is focused on the natural laws because it is a deep study of the nature of realities and that's why you can see that how science and jainism are going parallel or together so thank thank you again to all the audience all the organizers and also the speaker dr sudesh shah um dr shah um if you would like to say something remember you wanted to speak uh, so let me know um, yeah. i mean the audience are waiting um, so uh, and also the... i have um, bharti shah who would like to um, do a vote of thanks once you are done so yeah i'll just take one or two minutes see if you take uh, for example uh, mantra jap and mantra dhyan when you chant om namo narayanam om namo narayanam om namo narayanam that is kind of mantra jap but when it becomes meditation you have to understand similarly when you are reading there is simple reading but when you are reading and it becomes meditation it is the same analogy that i am giving when you are focusing on a mantra with the meaning of the mantra you become identified with that mantra or you you go to the vibrational part of the mantra as for example om namo arihantanam by when i chant this my whole existence goes down to those arihant who who have conquered external and internal enemies when i am saying om namo narayanam i jab i am just chanting something and the words have their own meaning so they will be powerful they will have effect but when i am doing meditation when i am meditating when i am saying om namo and bowing down to the lord arihant and when i am identifying myself i am seeing lord arihant sitting on samavasaran and then myself is going down that kind of unifiedness when occurs with mantra ja it becomes mantra dhyan that is how every act should be like this when you read you are there the, the observer the seer and the object are unified and that becomes meditation every act should be like this thank you so much we are really enlightened um, i would request mrs bharti shah the president of jccf to vote of thanks <laughs>